Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode 61 of the Nourish and Strengthen podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the importance of strength training, specifically for women over 40. This is so, so important, you guys. So whether you have been strength training for years like I have, or maybe you're new to it, or maybe you have a friend or your mom that you want to get started with strength training, but it's like they don't know where to start. It feels overwhelming. This episode is for you, okay? I also want you to listen up if you've had to take some time off from strength training due to, you know, maybe some extended lack of motivation or an injury or a surgery, something like that. I'm going to have some tips in here for you as well. We know this, you guys, we know that strength training is so important for getting that lean toned look we want, but it's also so important for our health, for our bone density, for our metabolism, for staying strong as we age. You guys, we want to be the grandmas who can get on the floor with our grandkids and run and jump and play and get things off of out of high cupboards and open jars, all the things, right? All the things that we really take for granted when we're younger but we lose that strength as we get older and we got to keep it up. So we're going to be talking about why this is so important. So I want to first touch on something that happens to all of us. Okay. Unless you take uh, specific measures to prevent it, which we're going to talk about that too. And that is called sarcopenia. Okay. Sarcopenia is the muscle loss that happens and the strength loss that occurs with aging. Okay. It's going to begin for everyone around 30. Unfortunately, isn't that like the cruelest trick of nature that this starts at such a young age, but it's going to accelerate significantly over the age of 40. So if you feel like, oh my gosh, I hit 40 and now I just can't do all these things. It's not in your head. Okay. There's probably something real going on here and that is called sarcopenia. Okay. It's that muscle, that loss of muscle mass and strength. All right. And there's a lot of reasons why this happens. And we're going to dive into them and also dive into what we can do about each of these reasons to help combat that. Okay. So reasons why sarcopenia happens, hormonal changes, decreased physical activity as we age, poor nutrition, and also just the natural aging process that we actually can't control. Okay. So let's dive into each one of these first. Let's talk about hormonal changes. So we have estrogen and testosterone, okay? Both of these hormones play a really, really important role in maintaining our muscle mass. And so we know, if you guys have listened to this podcast for long enough, you know that as we age, estrogen levels are going to drop, okay? This is going to happen mostly in perimenopause. um, And then, you know, by the time we're postmenopausal, we're going to have pretty much zero estrogen, right? And this is going to lead to more muscle loss, which is why that sarcopenia accelerates after the age of 40, but kind of starts in our thirties. Okay. We also have growth hormone and IGF one that stands for insulin like growth factor. And these hormones are also going to decline as we get older. And with the decline of these hormones, that's going to reduce our ability to build more muscle. So not only are we losing muscle, but we are I have a harder time with building muscle too. Okay. So it also happens because as we get older, our physical activity just kind of goes down, unfortunately, unless we take specific measures and put a focus on increasing our physical activity. Okay. A lot of people become less active as they get older due to, you know, things like busy lifestyles, having older kids, like having teenagers, you have to drive around all these things that make it so that we feel like we're sitting a lot more, whether we're sitting in the car, sitting at our computer working, right? Um, We might have physical limitations that happen as we get older. We might have a lack of motivation. And you probably have been in this cycle where it's like a lack of motivation. You don't really feel that great. So you don't move, you don't exercise. So you feel even worse. So you continue to not move and exercise and you continue to feel worse, right? It's this cycle that can be so hard to break. And our muscles, they kind of operate off of like a use it or lose it principle, right? So without that regular strength training, our muscles will begin to atrophy or shrink as we age, okay? And as we just sit there and don't use them. Uh, Sarcopenia can also happen because of our nutrition, right? Protein, you guys hear me talk about this all the time, but we know that protein is essential, right? For muscle repair and growth and maintaining that muscle. But oftentimes as we get older, we have, we tend to consume less protein. Okay. But in reality, you guys, the older we get, actually the more protein we need to fight this muscle loss. Okay. 
<clears throat> also, uh, our calories can go down as we age. As we get older, our appetite can go down. Our metabolism will go down, usually from less activity, right? And that's going to lead to less calorie intake, likely less protein intake, likely insufficient nutrients needed for maintaining that muscle. Okay. So those are some reasons why sarcopenia happens. Okay. Why we tend to lose muscle as we get older and what impact does that have on us? So let's just say, let's just talk in general about the impact on sarcopenia or on women over 40. So we're going to lose our muscle. Okay. Like we mentioned before, our muscle mass goes down with age. Um, and that's going to affect our physical capabilities and what we can do and how we can move and really our overall quality of life. Right. But also muscle loss can increase our body fat. Okay. You might be like, well, wait, how does muscle loss increase body fat? It doesn't really, you can't like swap muscle for fat, but as our muscle mass decreases, our body fat percentage is going to go up. So that's going to change the way you look. You might hear, you know, oh, I'm over 40 and I've got this fat in places that I've never had it before. It's going to lead to that higher body composition and more weight gain. Okay. Uh, it's going to lead to metabolic slowdown because our muscle tissue, our lean body mass is the most metabolically active tissue on our body. So it's going to burn more calories at rest than our fat tissue, right? So when we lose that muscle mass, it will slow down our metabolism. And that's going to make it harder to maintain your weight. It's going to make it harder to lose weight in the future. Um, losing muscle also is going to affect your bone health. Okay. A lot of people do know that, but let's talk about why. So muscles support and protect our bones. And so when we lose that muscle mass, as we age, it can lead to weaker bones and increased risk of osteoporosis. And that's when you find like you fall and you break a hip, right? <laughs> Oftentimes, like we've all heard about, you know, maybe someone in our family or someone who's older, like they fell and they broke bones. And you're like, that doesn't happen when you're younger. Okay. If you keep that muscle mass up and stay strong, the chances of that happening go way down. Uh, it's going to affect our functional, our, our, our functional way of life, right? Loss of muscle mass and strength and endurance can just make it hard to do our everyday tasks. And I know this stuff feels like it's so out there, meaning it's like way in your future. I have felt that before too. I feel like it's just the last couple of years where I've started to see strength training kind of in a different light. And, you know, maybe from my competition background, I saw strength training as a means to a lean physique. And it is still that for sure, but I'm seeing so much more in my life, the need to have that mobility and that strength and that endurance just for overall general health and aging, right? And the mental health too, you guys, muscle loss. And like when you lose some of those physical capabilities, it can affect your mental health and lead to depression, lower self-esteem, and just not feeling yourself, right? So have I, have I got you on board with why we don't want sarcopenia? Why we want to fight that? We want to keep as much muscle as, pro, as possible, right? One major way to do that is resistance training, strength training, okay? So resistance training will help combat that muscle loss and also stimulate new muscle growth, right? It's an easy fix, guys. So, you know, lifting in a gym, um, if you need to use resistance bands, even body weight exercises, if you're new to lifting and you don't, you know, you're just getting started, or maybe you're just coming back after an injury, a surgery, an extended break, starting with body weight uh, exercises are really, really effective for maintaining that muscle. Okay. Another thing that's so important is protein, right? If you guys have not listened to episode 30 for, 34, it's a while back there, but 34, I talk about 25 ways to pump up your daily protein. Um, there are so many fun ideas for adding more protein into your diet, but ensuring that you're getting enough protein is going to support that muscle repair and growth. Okay. So try to aim for a variety of sources of protein, you know, get some protein from lean meats. You can get it from dairy. You can use protein powders. There's also residual proteins in things like legumes, um, you know, wheat, like wheat and grains, things like that, but get most of your protein from those lean meats, that dairy, that protein powder, that's going to be the most easily for your body to use. Okay. Um, having just an overall active lifestyle is going to help combat muscle loss. So, you know, just making sure you're not super sedentary, getting up during the day and walking around 
living an active lifestyle, finding things that are active that you love to do, whether that is even like working in your yard or, you know, rollerblading, like I like to do going on walks with your, with your family, with your dogs, whatever, um, can help combat muscle loss. Okay. But another thing that's going to combat muscle loss is maybe the opposite of what you might think. And that is getting enough rest and recovery. Guys, do you think that you get stronger in your actual workouts, when you're in the gym, when you're doing your workout, you actually don't, you actually get stronger afterwards when you're recovering. So I want you guys to think about, you know, getting stronger or working out like a brick wall. Okay. So you have this brick wall, you want it to get bigger, get stronger, get taller, right? And in a workout, you actually create these microscopic tears in your muscle fibers that actually make you a bit weaker in the short term. Okay. It's kind of like knocking down that brick wall and then you walk away from the brick wall and it builds back up again. Okay. So it's during that rest and recovery that our muscles repair and get stronger. So if you are not getting adequate rest and recovery and you just continue to knock down that brick wall and knock down that brick wall, you're never going to get stronger. Okay. This is exactly why I talk about traditional weight training being better for women over 40 and ensuring that, you know, you are resting between your sets. I'm not just talking about sleep here and I'm not talking about rest days. I mean, I am, but I'm also talking about getting adequate recovery between your sets in your workout. I don't want you guys going to the gym and going from squats to push-ups to running to burpees to squat jumps. That that might've worked when we're in our twenties, maybe our early thirties. But as we get older, the need for rest and recovery, even in our workouts is so much more important. Okay. So strength training, protein, all intake can combat all those things that sarcopenia does to us, right? It can improve our metabolism. It can improve calorie burning. It can build muscle and strength, even more than building muscle. We want to be strong, right? It can help our bone density. It can reduce the risk of osteoporosis and falling as we get older. It can also help our hormones, right? We've, we've talked about that before, boost our mood, increase our energy levels, and just make us feel better. Okay. So I want to talk about you know, what's really happening. I touched on that a minute ago about those microscopic tears in our muscle fibers, but what really happens? How does muscle growth actually work? Okay. Have you guys heard the word hypertrophy? Muscle hypertrophy is muscle growth. Okay. And that occurs when, you know, we're lifting weights and we're creating these microscopic tears in the muscle fibers. Okay. But it really occurs afterwards. Like I mentioned a minute ago, during that rest, that recovery process, our muscle repairs and grow stronger. Okay. So that's why sleep is so important. That's why having enough rest days is so important. You might have been able to lift six days a week when you were 25, 30, maybe even 35, maybe, but now you might be finding that that just taxes you and you're exhausted. I highly recommend for women over 40, three to four days a week of lifting is perfect. It allows you to get into your workouts, just crush it, push yourself super hard and then rest. That's what we need. Okay. Progressive overload is something that's really, really important. That's a way, that's how you continue to push yourself by gradually increasing the intensity of your workouts. You can do that in a number of ways. Maybe that is uh, over time lifting heavier weights. Maybe that is doing shorter rest intervals sometimes. Maybe that is manipulating your tempo, like a slower eccentric, um, slower lowering of the movement, okay? Um, there's a lot of different ways to progressively overload. We do talk about that in my coaching program. Um, you know, ways to continue to push yourself, cycling your workouts over six week training blocks and adjusting the sets and reps. There's so many ways to continue to push yourself over time, but you just can't go into autopilot in your lifting workouts, guys. You have to always be pushing yourself if you want to make sure you're maintaining that, um, muscle mass and building new muscle. Okay. Nutrition and recovery. So important. So Getting adequate protein, like I mentioned, and rest and sleep, all of this is crucial. Okay, so hopefully you have an idea now about, you know, how muscle growth works and the importance of the repairing of that muscle and why recovery is so, so important. But I also, instead of just thinking about strength training, I also want you to, you know, think about other forms of exercise as well and really take a comprehensive look at your fitness routine. Okay. So you've got your strength training. Cardio is super important as well. You guys that's moving throughout the day. That's getting your heart rate up. It's so good for, I don't like cardio for fat loss. I mean, it might help a little bit as needed, but 
don't look at it as the end all be all for your weight loss. Okay. Cardio is amazing for your heart health, for your oxygen consumption, for, uh, you know, so many health markers, cardio can help that. Okay. Also flexibility and mobility. These are super, super important. So, you know, we've talked about strength training. Let's talk about cardio a little bit more here. So, you know, anything that gets your heart rate up that you love to do, whether that is, you know, swimming, run, jogging, um, using an elliptical, whether it's, you know, a dance class, whatever. I do like to do lower intensity as we get older. Okay. But there might be certain times where higher intensity is needed too. I don't want to give, this is more of a general overview here. I don't want to give a prescriptive program for each person, but just in general, I just want to touch on the fact that cardio is so, so helpful for heart health and general health markers. Okay. And let's touch on mobility as well. So as we get older, we can kind of stiffen up, right? And you might notice like, you know, especially if your body's sore, it might be hard to, you know, touch your toes, get down on the floor, that kind of thing. That's where mobility training comes in. So incorporating yoga and mobility exercises can really, really help. It'll reduce your risk of injury. It'll support your overall just kind of functional fitness, which, you know, to be totally honest, I used to kind of overlook this a bit, but as I've gotten older, <laughs> And as you feel like, oh my gosh, it's so much easier to get injured. You guys, the risk of soft tissue injury as we get older is, is a big deal. And so getting that proper mobility before you're lifting is so, so important. And this is what's going to allow you to be able to, like I mentioned, get on the floor and run and play with grandkids for years and years as we get older. And it's something that we kind of lose sight on, especially when we just think so much about, you know, strength training's role in body composition and how we look, right? is so, so important in that longevity of our health and fitness. So I want to finish up here by touching on a few common myths and misconceptions. Okay. I hope nobody out there is still thinking this, but you know, there was a long time where women were afraid of strength training because they didn't want to look bulky. Okay. They didn't want to build too much muscle guys. We don't have the testosterone to build the level of muscle that you don't want to have. Okay. What I mean is if you see like some bodybuilder female, I guarantee you she is on exogenous hormones that are making her able to build that amount of muscle. You just going into the gym and working really, really hard is not going to make you build that amount of muscle. I've heard the analogy that people say, well, that's like saying, I don't want to drive because I don't want to be a NASCAR driver. Like people who build that kind of muscle work at that for years and years and years to do so. And you're not going to get there just by picking up a weight. Okay. Strength training is going to help you build that toned lean look that you're going for and not an overabundance of muscle. Okay. And that lean muscle is going to help with metabolism, help you get stronger, improve your body composition, and just your overall, it's going to help you just look more overall fit, right? Not that bulky look. So don't even worry about that. Another myth that I hear a lot is, well, if I want to lose weight, I'm just going to do cardio. I'll add strength training later or cardio is good for my health. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. Like I mentioned, cardio is, is great for heart health, but it's not, it's not the best for weight loss. Okay. So relying only on cardio can actually lead to muscle loss, especially if you're not eating enough. Okay. It's really, really important to incorporate strength training too, to make sure that you are maintaining that muscle at the least and building muscle as well. Right. Um, like I mentioned, it's going to help with your metabolism, which is going to help with your weight loss. You don't want to rely on cardio alone. Okay. Another myth we hear a lot, older women, maybe over 40, maybe over 50 can't build muscle guys. That's not true. It might be harder. Yes. Because as we go into perimenopause and we become postmenopausal, we do naturally lose those sex hormones. Okay. That we had when we were younger that do help with muscle building that estrogen and testosterone specifically, but it is 100% still possible. Okay. It might be a little slower, but it's absolutely still possible. There's actually been studies that show this, that women in their forties and fifties can and older actually can build muscle and can build strength as long as they're getting enough protein and doing regular resistance training. Okay. So, so important. So now let's touch on you know, where do we start? So whether you're new to this and maybe you want to share a podcast with this podcast with like, like I said, your mom, your sister, someone who's new to strength training, or maybe this might even be for you. If you are coming off an extended break for whatever reason, okay. You want to start slow and listen to your bodies. Okay. So starting with lightweights, if you had a surgery, if you had, you know, a lot of time off, 
cut your weights back a little bit. Don't just jump right into where you left off. Okay. If you are new to this altogether, start with body weight only for a little while, even just going through the motions of the exercises you find in a program with very light weights and then slowly increasing your weights based on how you did the week before. This is why it's so important to keep track you guys of your weights lifted. So if you're one of my coaching clients, you know, this, we have a special app for our clients and in that app, there's a note section. So if you're a client and you don't know this, here's a little hack. There's a note section on each exercise. So I want you to write in there. If you're not a client of ours, you don't have an app keep a notebook. I have tons of notebooks from my past lifting that say what I lifted, how much weight. So you're going to write how much weight you lifted for each set, how many sets you did and how many reps you did. So for example, let's say shoulder press, you might have shoulder press as your exercise. Let's say you did one set with twenties. So you might say twenties by 10 reps, then maybe the next set you did twenties by eight reps. Then maybe you dropped the weight a little bit and you did 17s by eight reps. Then guess what guys next week or in a couple weeks, when you go to do that same exercise again, you're going to look back at what you did before and you're going to see if you can get one more rep. Maybe you do twenties again and 10 and 10 reps and your next set you do twenties and you get nine reps. That's progressive overload. That's pushing yourself a little bit harder and seeing yourself get stronger over time like that is addicting and it is so empowering you guys. And as you, as you lift and get stronger, the empowerment you feel is going to leak out into others, other areas of your life. And you're going to notice yourself feeling more confident at work, more confident in your relationships, more confident in, uh, with your friends. Like you're going to find yourself you know, doing something so hard in the gym makes you realize you can do hard things in other aspects of your life as well. And it is truly, truly life-changing. So little, that was my little soapbox there. Uh, it's important to listen to your body though. Okay. So I want you to pay attention to how you feel in an exercise. If you're feeling pain, that's not just related to, you know, normal muscle soreness or just, you know, going through the motions of the exercise correctly. If you're feeling pain, it's important to stop and look up a a form video or talk to a trainer. Or if you're working with one of our coaches, send your coach a Marco Polo, a video chat and show your coach your form. And we can help you tweak that. Okay. Also setting realistic goals, guys, don't forget. It's important to move slowly and not have these expectations of huge changes in strength, weight change, how you look or feel super quickly. Things take time. Okay. So just remembering that now, uh, let's see F efficiency. You do not need to have a workout that takes forever. You don't, you definitely don't need to strength train more than an hour. I've really found that like 40, 35 to 45 minutes right around that is perfect where you can put in enough work to get the hormonal benefits and the, the muscle benefits that we want without it feeling like it's taking over your day. Guys, really 35 to 45 minutes, three to four times a week is truly all you need. It really, really is. Okay. So let's talk about how to set up these workouts. So it depends on how many days a week you have, but what I like is if you lift three days a week, I like to do one upper body day, one lower body day, and then a full body workout. So really you're hitting each muscle group twice in a week, right? If you have four days a week, I like two upper and two lower most of the time. Uh, another option for the three day a week actually is to go through, uh, a two upper, two lower cycle, which is alternating upper and lower. So one week you're going to have two upper body and one lower body. And the next week you'll have two lower body and one upper body workout. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's kind of a good way to set that up without within your week while still allowing to have plenty of rest days and plenty of recovery. Okay. And on those rest days, on those recoveries, still walk, do some gentle yoga, do things that promote that recovery, you know, um, whatever that is for you, getting in a sauna, getting massage, taking a, a bath, whatever that is to help your recovery that helps you feel better. Okay. Now I want to touch on nutrition because nutrition really, really does help with, with muscle building and muscle retention. Okay. And like I mentioned before, protein is key here. So go listen to episode. What did I say it was? I think 34. Uh, let me see episode. Where was it in my notes? Yeah. Episode 34, 25 ways to pump up your protein. Go listen to that one because you got to have enough protein. And I go over all the details in that episode. Okay. But it's not just protein. You're not going to see optimal muscle growth, muscle retention just by eating protein. Like what if you just ate a thousand calories of protein? No, that wouldn't be good. 
you need healthy carbs, healthy fats as well. Uh, carbs are our best source of energy, easiest form of energy for our bodies, and healthy fats are crucial for hormone production. I have an episode that goes over that as well, but I didn't look up the episode um, number beforehand. But really, really important to get enough healthy fats for hormone production, okay? And just getting enough general calories and a variety of balance in your diet is going to help you get the vitamins and the minerals you need just for overall health, okay? Let's talk about timing protein consumption and protein and carbs around your workout. There used to be more of a thought around this anabolic window. Maybe you've heard that term before. People used to think this was really important. Recent research is showing that it's not truly as big of a deal as we used to think. You know, if you are working out early in the morning and you don't eat first, just use common sense, right? Come home from the gym and eat a balanced meal. Okay. If you do eat before and you eat like an hour or you work out like an hour after you eat, still having a balanced meal within a couple hours of your workout is going to be the next time you'd eat anyway. Right. So I feel like a lot of this is common sense. What you don't want to do though, is if you're doing an extended period of fasting, which I don't recommend for women over 40 anyways, but you wouldn't want to have your workout be right in the middle of that fast where you haven't been eating, eating for a long time. And then you don't eat again for a long time after your workout. That is not ideal. Okay. Cause our bodies need that protein and carbs to start that recovery process. Okay. So just use common sense, have a balanced meal before and or close after your workout. Okay. Hydration also super important for muscle retention and building. And really, you know, we talk about this a lot here as well on the podcast, but half your body weight in ounces of water is perfect for hydrating your body and also pay attention to your, the color of your pee. If it's clear, you're good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I mean, stretching flexibility. So something you don't want to do, and this is a little bit controversial in, in, you know, what people say, but static stretching is ideal for post-workout. Okay. I don't even, guys don't even ask me the last time I did static stretching. I'm the worst, but if it's something you feel like helps you with mobility, do it post-workout, okay? It's that dynamic mobility that you want to do before your workout, okay? So if you have a dynamic mobility routine that you like, that's great. Otherwise, you can just do a few warm-up sets of the first couple exercises of your workout. That works great as well. And, you know, the last thing I do want to touch on, <laughs> and I beat this one to a whole, uh, like, what, I beat it, I beat, I talk about it too much. What's the phrase? I forget but is sleep guys. Sleep is so crucial. Remember, remember we talked about those microscopic tears in the muscle and it's during the recovery and during sleep when those repairs, when those microscopic tears heal up. Okay. So our body releases growth, growth hormone during sleep. And so we really need that quality sleep though, for our body to release the growth hormone, which is going to help that muscle recovery. So it's important to aim for like seven to nine hours of sleep in order to make sure you're getting enough of that quality sleep per night. Okay. So getting a good sleep hygiene routine, avoiding caffeine late in the day, avoiding, you know, using your screens, your devices at bedtime, all these things will really, really help to get that quality sleep needed to help your muscle recovery and muscle retention. All right, guys. So hope that was helpful for you. I hope you got some little nuggets for that. Please share this episode with someone who you know, is maybe new to strength training or not quite on the strength training bandwagon. Or if you just need that refresher, hopefully that helped you. You know, we, we talked about how to, you know, combat sarcopenia, what it does to us, how to combat that, and also how to help, you know, with your nutrition, how to properly recover and how to get back into strength training if you've had a, a prolonged break. So hopefully this helped you. If you guys need this all done for you, this is what we do in coaching. We handle all of this for you. We help with form if needed via our video chatting. We create workout plans custom to you, your goals, your abilities, what you have available, how much time you have. Also, we create workouts with your hormonal situation in mind. If you are postmenopausal, if you are 30 years old, like you're going to need different styles of workouts. Okay. So we have take all that into account when we have a coaching client. So please reach out to me on social media. If you have any questions about coaching with us or just about strength training in general, I wanted this to be kind of an overview on why it is so important to do this as we get older and how it helps us. So hope you enjoyed that guys. And I will talk to you guys next week.